That's Dr. Frederick. Uh, we want to look at problem uh, 9 in uh, the first uh, homework module. It's a, it's a difficult problem to work and it's, it's not, not made easier by uh, um, stack crunch which is very clunky. But uh, the first thing I want to notice is, is that the, uh, the F value here at 0.01 Where's the 0.01? At the 0.01 level of significance, completely analyze the data. We're going to end up with uh, degrees of freedom of 2 and 18. Now, I have another video showing you how to find that value. I don't think that StatCrunch is going to give it to you, but uh, let's, uh, let's just view an example. In the example, we're going to open uh, our data. Here they are. And here are our data. Now, what we have is we have batches. Now, a batch for this problem is, uh, you know, a, uh, a time in which something was produced. We're measuring the thicknesses at different parts of a wafer. And a student asked me, you know, where there's, you can't answer the question about position 2 because there is no position 2. But, well, for the problem, they, they mean this is position 1, this is position 2. And this is position three. There's three groups, one, two, and three. Group two refers to position nine on a wafer, and position 28 refers to a position on a wafer. Um, but there's three positions, one, two, and three. Okay. Now, what is what is the batch here? Well, we want to reduce the variability of position. What might be true about differences in position? Um, and uh, we do that by running it at different times or on different machines. Um, I, I'm not sure about whether it's different machines, but this is a block. This is really an, a, a, an ANOVA with blocks, and blocks are designed to reduce, you know, to really sort of extract variability so that you can take error that comes from different batches out of your comparison here. We don't want the blocks to be significant. If, it, if they are, then we, then we have a lot of trouble. Um, we, we want to just take error out, and we're, not, we're, we're hoping that our, our blocks are not significant. If, if they are, then we have to pay attention to, you know, we have to have different ideas about different blocks. Okay. So, Here's the real problem. These data are not set up in a way that allows you to evaluate them. And you don't know that, and it doesn't tell you, and I'm going to show you, okay? So we're going to copy this table into uh, StatCrunch, and uh, I, don't, I don't have Secure Java on my machine, and I don't care to have Secure Java on my machine, but it'll, it'll load here. Um, we're going to run this. So here's here's our data. Now, what we want to do is we want to get our data in position to evaluate them. And we're going to do that uh, by stacking columns. Well, here's what we want. is We want three columns to evaluate. We want one column that tells us which batch the data we're in. We want one column to tell us the measurements on these positions, and then we, we want another column to tell us which position we were in. So let me just show you how to do it. We're going to stack the columns, and um, we're going to stack these columns. Okay, so we're going to store the labels in something called position, and we're going to store our values in something called values. Okay, so we want to stack the columns. Okay, so what we end up with is is a is a label column and a value column. Now, StackCrunch will say, "Okay, we're going to tell StackCrunch to look here for the position that they're in." But here's all the values for position one. Here's all the values for position two, and then if we scroll down, we'll see all the values for position three. Now. We want our batch column. Uh, it's a very clunky program. In Excel, you'd be done here already, uh, just copying and pasting. But it's really hard to copy and paste in StackCrunch. 
you could do everything in Excel and bring it back, but if you were going to do everything in Excel, you might as well do everything in Excel to begin with, which is a much nicer stat program, uh, in my view, okay? Why do we use stat crunch? You know, it, it goes with this, this uh, Pearson product. Okay, we have three columns, batch, position, and values. And so now we're going to do an ANOVA, and we're going to do a two-way ANOVA. And so the responses are in values. And the row factor here is referring to the batch. And the column factor is referring to the position. Okay, so we'll calculate now, and we'll end up with our... Oh, I'm sorry. Do it again. You have to, this is very clunky. You have to, let's just do it over again. Values, batch, and position. And then we'll go next, and we're going to click Fit Added to Model Y. You have no idea that you're supposed to select that, but that's what you're supposed to do. Okay, there's our ANOVA table, and we're going to get all our answers. Now, the first thing I want to tell you is, that uh, the, the columns, the, the rows are in the wrong order. You know, the position column should be up top, but we're smart. We can figure out what is what. Now, there's a lot of other things that, uh, we'll, we'll do that again. There's a lot of other things that uh, your problem wants you to do, and I just want to show you that, you, you know, it's easy to get them. Um, this, this. Stay here with stat. If I just do a Nova here real quick, one way, and I put my positions in, you know, it's going to give me my means. So if you want to find your means, you can do that. Find your standard errors um, or standard deviations associated with that. So here's how you would get your means, which is part of the question. We, we don't care what the grand mean is, and it doesn't really ask you to, to find it. Um, wouldn't be hard to find it. Let's do. Let's go back and, and do our two way again. Okay. Why Why doesn't save what you've done? I have no idea. Okay. So this was batch. This was position. Um, and then we're going to fit additive and calculate. Okay. Let's just look at this, and we won't work through the problem. Here's our ANOVA table. Position should be up in the first row. And our F value is 8.38. It's less than 0.01, which means what? It says this. Here's how you understand this. If I took a sample endlessly from a population in which the null hypothesis is true, um, then I would get an F this large this percent of the time. Well, that's that's impressive. So that means our critical value is much less than 8.38. We already looked it up, found it was 6.01. The fact that our obtained F statistic is larger than our F critical means that we reject the null hypothesis. Okay. The other way we say is our alpha is 0.01. This value this p-value is less than 0.01, therefore we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, if our obtained p-value is less than our alpha risk, our alpha p-value, 0.01, then we reject the null hypothesis. Now, here's our blocks. We did blocks, why? We wanted to, to take out error. We, we took out a lot of error. That was very useful to our experiment. And so we blocked our blocking is not significant. That's a relief to us because it would certainly complicate matters uh, to, to have uh, significant blocks. Okay, so this is what we're really interested in. This F value, this P value. I don't know if uh, if it asked for us to uh, to compare groups. We'll reject it. Should, surely we should be able to do that somehow. Let's see. Let's try it once more. We're going to do a blocking ANOVA. The 
values batch position next fit additive I didn't see an option to uh, to do a post hoc test here if it if they require a post hoc test and you want to see how to do it just let me know all right thanks